Hi guys, I'm back. Okay, I'm going to read chapter four now. Let's um, enjoy this together. It's titled, Quick Jolt of Pain. Climbing the scaffolding in Rome to view masterpieces and discuss their treatment with the other restorers, that's when you know you were born to a cause, to restore, to paint, to leave behind a legacy of beauty for future generations to enjoy. Rolf explained. His mind drifted back to the mantle at home, the photograph in the thick silver frame, him and his father with the Pope. Rolf would never forget how his father embraced him that time, that last time, as if he knew they would never see each other again. How had he really died? That question still haunted his dreams. How desperately he wanted to make him proud. Would he turn over in his grave to know, to see, that his son now assisted the Reich with the skills he taught him? Hans broke into Rolf's revelry. Rome, I would get anything to have been there with you. You seem as obsessed as your father, Rolf. Obsession, talent, greatness, it all sort of goes together, doesn't it? With a quiet laugh, feeling un uncomfortable by the comparison, Rolf turned and lifted a sheet off another Rubens. I don't know if I should take all the credit for whatever talent we might have, Hans. As the superior race, he said sarg sardonically, we come equipped with advantages free of charge. Hans snorted, lit a cigarette, and set it at the edge of the, his palette, a tube of red oil paint at his fingertips. I don't think anything, anyone can argue the premise of the Aryan theory when you see a gorgeous, blonde, blue-eyed girl. They both chuckled. Under the massive pentagonal fortress of stone known as Warsaw's Royal Castle, Rolf carried out his duties for the Third Reich, from the top of the high helmeted clock tower to the buried chambers under the solid brick foundation, Ralph and his team created all the furnishings, carpets, clocks, even the fine china, silver, and crystal, and sent it back to Germany. Now Rolf had to coordinate the dismantling and creating of all the precious works of art. For his part in the master plan, Rolf worked in the subterranean vault, his office, and a three-story warehouse where he inspected, measured, cataloged, valued, and allocated Warsaw's greatest treasures. To assist him with minor canvas restorations, Hans Klinger was taken for, from Berlin's, Berlin's, Nash, uh, sorry, Berlin's National Gallery regular staff and reassigned to work in Warsaw at Rolf's site. As an added benefit, Ralph agreed to teach him the secrets that he had made that had made his father famous as an ancient art rest restorer. Despite the missing upper knuckle and his middle of his middle finger on his right hand, Hans' dexterity and steadiness with a paintbrush were flawless. Already skilled in special techniques such as graffito marbleizing, burnishing, and punchwork, Hans' interest in restoration as a way to study the masters in more detail showed brilliant instinct. We are lucky, Rolf. We are. We both have great fathers, Hans whispered, and Rolf remembered the guards stationed at the door. Although watching every word out of his mouth exhausted him, he understood the necessity. Had, I had a great father, Hans. A very great father. He's still great to a lot of people, Rolf. Hans had worked at the National Gallery in Berlin for six years, a year under the previous curator, Rolf's father. Hans and Rolf had worked together the past two weeks, but still Rolf hadn't mustered up the courage to ask him if he knew anything about his father's unexplained death. Would he ever find out what really happened? 
with a temporary assignment in Warsaw to oversee the confiscated national treasures, he was out of comfort, sorry, he was out of contact with those in the know. He needed to get back to Berlin as soon as possible. He uncovered another masterpiece and whispered, I have dreams, Hans. Hans searched through his tray like someone scrambling eggs, apparently frustrated at his disorganization. Finally, he gave up and traded his sable brush tinted with pink paint for his cigarette. Dreams? As the familiar scent of the linseed oil gave way to the stink of tobacco, Ralph considered telling Hans he was ruining his restoration with the malic acid and carbon monoxide of his smoke, but he wanted to keep to the subject of his father. I've, I've never told anyone else, but I, I see my father in my dreams. He's high on a scaffold looking down at me. Maybe it's just a memory from Rome. He says something to me, but, well, I'm not sure what he says. No matter how many times I have the dream, I can't make out the message. I believe in that, Hans said as he reached for the brown jacket from the back of the chair and slipped it on. This temperature may be good for the paintings, but my body prefers a toasty campfire. In what? You believe in what, Hans? In the dead visiting us, leading us, maybe hoping we'll get the message that this life isn't everything there is, that the spirit goes on. Ralph nodded, and he couldn't respond. He had to think first. Use caution. There was a quality about Hans that everyone admired, his polite cooperativeness. But the idea of asking him about his father made Rolf's stomach destabilize. Rolf already had enough trouble in Berlin over his conversation with Brutzgeller. From Hans, he could probably get an answer, but would the inquiry get reported to the authorities? Hans stayed busily engaged, fastening another ancient canvas on as Rolf tore off the brown paper from a painting brought in by the Gestapo, Peace and War, Rolf ran his fingers along the edge of the frame, searching for any flaws, another magnificent Rubens masterpiece. Did you see his Chapelle des Palais over there behind the Lorenz? Hans was an odd, odd fellow, Rolf mused, his color-laced fingernails a little too long, his head full of disarrayed brown fuzz, always speckled with oil colors. Ralph enjoyed working with him, but trust was another matter. Lifting the Lorraine aside, Ralph found the Cha Chapeau de Palais. A splendid woman with a wide black hat stared back in, with a mournful expression. Himmler will probably think this woman is a Jewish Jewess is the word. Be careful, Hans. The guards have extrasensory hearing. Hans said in a low voice, chuckling a little. But it is the truth. I'm supposed to make those judgments on Himmler's behalf. You, you think Jewish? But she's a rare beauty. Even Himmler can't deny that. Hans insisted after releasing several billowy puffs of smoke. <clears throat> Just don't get caught being too cozy with one of those attractive Jewishes, Jewesses. That could be a serious infraction in this day and time. Yeah, a few years in a work camp or death, I'd take a bullet over one of those camps. A good choice, Ralph. Quick jolt of pain, no whips, no starvation, no torture. And best of all, no suffering. Rolf, can you believe how strict the laws are now? I mean, a man almost has to ask to see a woman's pedigree chart before ask, asking for a date. Obviously, no German of the Reich is foolish enough to get involved with a Jew intentionally. But the point is Himmler is obsessed about purging them from German territory. Rolf didn't care for Himmler a bit. 
and every time his name came up, he couldn't help thinking Himmler knew something about his father's death. He's thinking, of course he knows. He knows everything. Or Heydrich. For sure Heydrich knows. With all his spies on active duty, he keeps his finger on every pulse of the Third Reich. Rolf balanced the frame of the Chateau de Pierre on the lip of the crate. You know, Albrecht Dürer once said, I hold that the perfection of form and beauty is contained in the sum of all men. I believe a true artist sees the perfection and imperfections in people. It's the defects, the limps, the differences, the odd and uncommon traits that gives us art worth looking at, worth painting. If we were all the same, wouldn't it be a dull world? Hans swept a bit of red onto the end of the brush and held it in midair as he added his thoughts. Yes, it would, without contrast. There would be no balance. Have you ever stopped to consider how every single person is exactly the same, minus their skin? The skin lends individuality to our exterior. It imparts beauty and age. But inside, we are all the same, all the mechanisms striking the same beat, the search for happiness equal. With the keen eyes of a painter, Rolf stopped and studied his companion. This is deep, Hans. Who said that? No one. I mean, it's just, it's an observation. His, eye, his grape-colored eyes peered over at Rolf. That one looks like a high society to me, not a Jewess. Don't crate it, hide it, or send it east. High society, Rolf thought. Rolf's mother and father were once considered high society, living in a marvelous flat in Charlottenburg, an affluent sector in Berlin, dining with rich artists and businessmen. This morning, however, his mother was out in the barn in Bavaria collecting eggs. As Rolf stared, stored a Bernardo Bellato's painting, he deliberated. Hans had worked with Rolf's father, and his philosophy showed depth. Perhaps he was an ally, ally after all. He walked toward another Bellato painting on the other side of the pillar from Hans and examined the thick gilded frame. Can I ask you a question? Sure, but remember who's listening. Rolf whispered as he pecked, as he peeked, sorry. <laughs> he's not pecking, he's speaking. As he peeked behind the pillar at Hans. Ever heard of a man named named Joseph Weinstein. Hans used a fine brush to rectify the faded stem of a rose as he, his fa face went pale. Rolf watched beads of sweat form on his forehead. After a puff, Hans finally said, it's a pretty, it's a pretty common sounding name. Can't, can't say, can't say I remember anyone specifically by that name. Rolf stepped out in front of the pillar, forgetting about the moles. Is that a no? It's a Jewish name, Hans. Try to think. Someone my father knew in Berlin. Hans motioned to remind Rolf about the ears at the entrance. Your father had a lot of friends, Rolf. Rolf saw the posture in Hans' expression. Perhaps their friendship didn't go that deep. I guess he did, just thought. Hans kept at the restoration one stroke at a time. I was wondering if we should mark these paintings, you know, with a code. Oh, what sort of code? Rolf asked. Maybe by the city they are taken from. That would be the only way their rightful owners could ever claim them in the future, if you see what I mean. Rolf felt his chest expand, his load lighten. Hans has a proper heart. Yes. Yes, I see.
<clears throat> Suddenly, in a chilling whisper, Hans bur blurted out, I should have said something earlier, Ralph. I don't, I don't think your father's death was exactly an accident. Ralph jumped at the words, dropping his brush on the floor. Oh! After a deep breath, he steadied himself. But they told us it was an accident. Well, it, it probably was, but, but, but what? Tell me. Hans broke eye contact and pulled his mouth in at the corners, hesitating. Okay. Okay. He lowered, lowered his voice to a lighter whisper. A day before he disappeared, 